I'm going to take uh, one last question, the woman in the yellow, and uh, anyway. It's like she won the lottery! Thanks a lot. Hi. Thank you for offering this venue for us. My name's Diane Thomas. I live here in Everett. I'm self-employed as a graphic designer, and thank God my husband has a good job. We have insurance. Yes, it gets expensive every year, um, and that bothers me. However, Congressman Larson, there is one portion of this bill that has not been addressed here today. I have never heard this addressed on any of the news media ever. And it can be found on page 57, beginning on line 10, and it's section 1173A, entitled Standardized Electronic Administrative Transactions. Right. And it goes on to say, since you are familiar with the bill, in paragraph D on page 58, and I'll quote, starting on line five, item D, enable the real-time or near real-time determination of an individual's financial responsibility at the point of service and, to the extent possible, prior to service, including whether the individual is eligible for a specific service with a specific physician at a specific facility, which may include utilization of a machine-readable health plan beneficiary identification card. Also, in item four of that same section, item four reads requirements for these specific standards and that these, in item A, they will clarify, refine, complete, and expand as needed the standards required under section 1173. Right. And then in paragraph C, it enables electronic funds transfers in order to allow automated reconciliation with the related health care payment and remittance advice. Now, Congressman Larson, I'm just an average, everyday, ordinary person. As a graphic designer who's self-employed, I spend a lot of time at my computer, and my husband will swear by that. He uh, has a sandwich for dinner a lot. So, I have a lot of time- He can make his own damn dinner. Do, that's right, he can. But I have a lot of time to do research. And this part of this bill scares me to death. It tells me that this is going to give the federal government a massive amount of intrusion into my personal life, into my personal finances. And frankly, I don't want that. Not at all. I don't either. And the, I don't either, and the section doesn't do that. I don't either, and the section does not do that. Here's what it does. Um, what, the, what the sections you're referring to have to do with uh, standardized, uh, standardizing the administration of, of um, pay, paying for health care. And this actually has to do with the relation, the financial relationship that exists between your provider, or the hospital, and the payer. Like the insurance company, in the case of Medicare, it would be the, uh, the federal government. It has nothing to do with you. All right. It, it has nothing to do with your 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 wallet, your bank. It doesn't. It has to do with Part C, subpart. I'm saying Part C, Title 11 of the Social Security Act, which is 42 U.S. Code, one the sections 1302-D and subsequent sections. And what this is has to do with the um, healthcare privacy rules, HIPAA rules. Now, why would there be discussion about finances if you're talking about healthcare privacy? Because a provider provides a set of procedures to you or whatever, and, and those have a medical code. And that medical code then is uh, you know, hopefully filled out on an electronic record, as opposed to a paper record. And it's sent to the payer. And then that payer gets that form electronically and makes a determination 
sometimes a bad determination uh, to consider the healthcare work that we talked earlier about what, what the insurance companies do. But they make a determination about payment, and that, and that payment is made. But because that payment is made based on something that should be private, that is the health care given to you, the health care privacy rules have to apply to that transaction. So the financial transaction I'm talking about here is not the financial transaction of a federal, of a federal, I'm sorry, of any government getting into your pocket or into your bank account. It gets into the financial transaction that takes place between the provider and the payer to ensure the privacy of that transaction. That's that's what that section is about. That's that's what all of that section is about. Well, what happens right now? Just so you understand, what happens right now when you go uh, to uh, the point of service would be your physician's office, right? In this case, right? So what happens right now? You, Presumably, I mean, you'd hope it happens this way. You go to the doctor's office or wherever you're going, and um, and uh, the doctor does a service, and their staff right fills out the form and sends it along. That's the point of service. That, that, that's the point of service, and it applies to the medical codes, and then eventually the dollar, the reimbursed dollars for that medical code. Not to um, what's in your pocket, or what's in your wallet. <laughs> it doesn't apply. It doesn't apply to that. It, 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 I, I, yeah, I'm sure this is a this is a healthcare. It's it's the it's the, basically taking the HIPAA rules that you passed in '96, '97 for protection of, uh, of medical information, and which we have applied since then to these transactions. It's been taking place for the last 13, 14 years, and. When you write legislation like this, where there's going to be, um, uh, uh, presumably, additional financial transactions related to healthcare, you have to take the existing law and make sure it applies to anything new you're trying to do. But, I mean, it's, it's, it has to do with the construction of the bill, as opposed to, um, you, you know, again, as opposed to your wallet. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the idea that the, with regards to electronic pen. Well, when you say like your debit card, yes, except not your debit card. It, yeah, it would be the, it'd be the relationship. It, it would be like if I was a doctor, which I'm not. But, you know, it'd be like, I'm, when I get a paycheck, they don't give me a piece of paper. It goes into my bank account. Right? That's, that's that's a bad analogy because that does apply to my wallet. But think of it, right? Right. Think of that bank account we're talking about as the as the, the doctor bank account, and the payer is sending the reimbursement to that bank account. Right. No, please email me about it. Yeah, please email me about it. You know, um, a couple things about just to wrap up tonight for those who are left. Um, thank you very much for being uh, a great community to represent. A great job. Good job. There is something I, I didn't I didn't point out earlier, and it's, it's not it wasn't a positive thing, and I wanted to be very careful about it. But there were some people here earlier holding up pictures of the president with the. Um, well, I tell you, I denounced it. I denounced it in Mount Vernon, and I'm denouncing it now. You should not be defacing this president or any president or comparing any president to the evil that was the head of Germany back in the back in No president. It's wrong. It, it, well, it's just, it's just, it's just flat out wrong. So, so that, that's, that's where I'm going with it. Now, please stay engaged, as if I need to let you know it. Please stay engaged on this issue. You know, we're looking at September, maybe October in the House, if we get to a point where we're going to vote on a bill. And that may not seem like a long time, but it's a long time in terms of what this bill will look like. And your input as we move forward is really, it's very critical. You've asked a lot of great questions. Some, as you know, I couldn't answer them, right? I need to go find answers for those. And I need to find out if I'm on the right side or the wrong side on those answers as well. 
That's what this is about. I appreciate it. You guys have done a great job.